Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Home Staging Talk Show Live. This is Jenny Norris, your host. This is our 104th episode. Um, welcome, everybody. And I am also the International Association of Home Staging Professionals Chairwoman. We have thousands of members worldwide. We are the largest home staging industry association. Been around since 1999, for those of you who are not familiar with us. Um, and so Home Staging Talk Show Live has been broadcasting now for 104 episodes. You can find all the back episodes at homestagingtalk.com or on our YouTube channel for IHOSP. And I'm excited for today's show. We've got a great guest for you. Um, so go ahead and comment. Let me know you can see me. Those of you that are tuning in, we're going to be streaming this live from our Facebook pages for Homestaging Talk page and group. And also other pages um, will be posting it there, sharing the link there shortly. So we'll have hopefully some good interaction. But it is December 9th. Today is the birthday of my oldest son. So he turns 25 today. So happy birthday, Stephen. So proud of you. Um, and we are well into December. And so we're going to talk a little bit about marketing uh, before we get to our guest speaker. But before that, I do have some announcements to make, of course. We always start off with some general announcements. Um, we do have our conference, of course, that's coming in September. So we are promoting that actively um, in Denver. So it is the 2021 IHOSP Conference and Expo. Um, it's going to be in Denver at the Gaylord Rockies Hotel. And uh, for those of you that are not familiar with that, that is the largest hotel west of the Mississippi. It um, had the largest or fastest opening of any hotel, I think, ever. They sold out like a million rooms, booking all the way to 2028 when they opened in late 2018. And of course, COVID has, you know, done some uh, finagling with that as well, uh, as far as hotel occupancy and so forth. But it's a beautiful hotel, very um, Colorado-ish, if you will, with the big lodge. This is the big main area of the hotel. And of course, we have secured a great rate for our attendees. So you go to ihospconexpo.com to take a look at everything and to get registered. Um, so we do have some specials that we're, promoting for our first 100 registrants, you will be considered a priority ticket holder or a VIP. And remember um, last year we changed the word from VIP to priority because there were people that were um, in the category, it could be a VIP person because of their background or status, not necessarily they bought a ticket first. And so they didn't understand why they weren't, didn't have a VIP badge <laughs> label. So we changed it to priority. So with the priority ticket holders, you're gonna get first access to any of our speakers um, with meet and greets. You have a special line you go to for registrations. You don't have to stand in the big line. You get to go to your special VIP line or the priority ticket. Um, you're gonna get a special goodie bag that's just you, you get with things that are inside that no one else receives. So that will be a lot of fun and it's gonna look different than other people. So that'll be another way to identify you. You get to sit in the front section of the conference and of course, at our Roaring 2021 Great Gatsby Gala, which will be on Sunday evening. Hey, Jenny. Um, hey, good to have you from the UK. Thanks for tuning in. Um, the Roaring 2021 Great Gatsby Gala, you will have a speakeasy, an exclusive speakeasy section that's private for our priority ticket holders. So again, just the first 100 at this point are going to be receiving that status. Um, at the Great Gatsby Gala, the speakeasy, we're, we're talking about maybe having special um, activities in this designated area, um, you know, courtesy drinks and so forth, and maybe even some appetizer food that you guys get that's special. So if you want to delineate yourself as one of the priority ticket holders and be the first to receive all the goodies that we're putting together for you, make sure to get your ticket. You can do a 50-50 purchase. We are allowing that. You can also bring your team, which is very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and play this promo I've played the last couple of weeks. Um, I think this might be the last week that I'll play this particular one. Whoops, let's do this. So go ahead and play this. You guys can see the info. Make sure my sound is up and wide. Okay, good. Awesome. Here we go. So just like a little synopsis there, a quick little snapshot. 
to see what some of the things we have planned for our conference. So our keynote speakers, um, uh, two of them so far that we have lined up, we have Johnny Fowler and Chris Widener, and I've talked a lot about these two gentlemen. Johnny Fowler, of course, is an expert in social media with Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram, and just as a wealth of knowledge. And, and each time he comes and shares, it's like light bulbs go on, and we're like, how come I didn't know this? And the reason he knows so much is because he invests a lot of money for his personal company in social media, advertising, and marketing. So he has his own designated rep for Facebook and so forth. And so he knows a lot of the inside nuances that those of us that don't have such a huge investment coming out to promote our businesses on Facebook. We don't have that. So he shares openly about everything that we need to know in order to get um, enough exposure, how to bypass some of the algorithms. So he's going to be awesome. And then Chris Widener will be our business keynote. Uh, he is an amazing man. He has uh, written 21 books. He has voted one of the top 50 motivational and business speakers in the world. And that was a ranking done independently. So he's very well um, known and um, just going to be an amazing live speaker for us. So we're very excited to have him and Johnny coming. And speaking of both of them, our advanced trainer, trainer staging session that we are planning right now for February in Florida, these two gentlemen will be there as well. And um, it's a carryover from our 2020 virtual conference. And um, I had asked both of them to be part of our advanced stage of training. And of course, they said yes without hesitation. So as long as we are able to have a live event in Florida in February, these two gentlemen will be there to share with the much smaller group advanced stage of training. And of course, that's for six figure and above business owners. It is February 13th and 14th in Jacksonville. And um, you can get your tickets now. Uh, if, if anything happens where we're not allowed to meet live and anybody who registered for that will be moved to our advanced stage of training that will take place September 27th and 28th in Denver, right after our conference. And again, these two gentlemen will be there to, to share. So it's a great opportunity to be able to pick someone's brain who, you know, knows more than we know, or just get perspective and mindset and the six figure um, and above qualification is because there's certain things that happen when you're growing a business at like a general conference, for example, we have to cater it towards beginners, intermediate and advanced stagers. And so some of the topics wouldn't pertain to somebody who's you know moved on and they've grown their business to a certain level. And uh, being able to get in depth into some of these topics is really important. So it's a workshop, more like a workshop setting, very collaborative, very interactive with all the people that are there, um, answering and asking questions, sharing experiences. And one of the things that I love is when people share the experience you know, we realize that we're not the only ones that are having this particular challenge um, or experience. And so you get can bounce ideas off of someone else who maybe has gone through what you're currently experiencing and, and you can learn. So that's one of the huge benefits of the advanced stage of training. It does include meals. So um, so just want to make sure you know about that. And you can find out about that at advanced stage or training. Dot com. Um, that same week, um, should everything go as planned, we are planning on teaching the master's course days prior. So those of you that want to earn your master's designation in staging, it is the highest form of training in our industry. You get accredited, which is higher than a certification and more than just a designation. Accreditation is the highest form of training in our industry. And so you get accredited as a master accredited staging professional home stager. Um, it is the three or four days prior to the advanced stage or training. So we will be teaching that and then um, hopefully having Joanne Lynn at Weary do a session on the Friday before the AS AST and then move right into the advanced stage or training. So it's gonna be kind of a package deal for the masters. And um, so you can register for that. We're also doing a virtual masters education online in January. So those of you that are, um, you know, interested in doing that, you can register for the live virtual course that I will be teaching in January for the masters. All right, financial planning series. This is continuing to um, be shared on Thursdays. Um, the sessions have been recorded. We will be uploading them. Um, it's a great way for you to learn what you need to know to advance your business for cash flow purposes, how to structure your, um, your team, whether you do have employees or 1099s, uh, even how to set up your business, should you be an LLC, a sole proprietor, et cetera, um, to business planning for exit strategies and also for retirement, how to get those things set up in place when you're an, a, you know, a solopreneur or an entrepreneur, whatever you want to call yourself, a stagerpreneur. So making sure that you are established and set up for years to come is important. So you want to plan now and even getting out of debt. There's debt strategies that, that um, can tackle that much faster than traditional methods. And so those are all the things that are being taught in these financial 
uh, business planning sessions. And so again, if you're interested in those, you can go to the IHOS site and you can click on education and then click on the financial business planning series. And um, you can put your information in and somebody will reach out to you to answer questions and also help you get access to the information. All right, so I'm excited for that. Um, let's see here. So at the Advanced Theater Training, we also have Joanne Leonard Weary and Sandra Race who've agreed to share. And um, as we get closer, we'll be lining up other people. I'm just sort of waiting to kind of see what happens with the virus. Um, you know, a lot of states are in reverse shutdown again. So we're going backwards instead of forwards. And um, anyway, so we'll we'll keep progressing as if it's going to happen. And I'm hoping by, you know, middle of January, we'll know for sure because we don't want to promote an event that eventually we have to postpone. So I love these two ladies. They always have a ton of information to share in marketing. Plus the other business niches that they offer, which is the decorating color. Um, and, um, you know, Joanne has a color course, the confident color system, the one day decorating and design and structure and so forth. They both have classes on that that they would teach together and also separately. So we love those two ladies. We love having them join us. Of course, the theme for our conference is SOAR. And S-O-A-R um, stands for Seek Opportunities and rise, seek opportunities and rise. And so um, that word rise kept coming to me throughout all of last year, or sorry, this year, as we would um, sort of progress through the unknown and rising above our circumstances, rising above our challenges, and then soaring where it's effortless. You know, when, a, when an eagle or a bird is soaring in that, that um, I don't know if you call it an air pocket or whatever it is, but they don't, they've already they're gliding and they don't have to exert as much effort because they've already made out the effort to get to that point where they are able to soar on a wind current. And so that's kind of the goal is to soar above our circumstances, to, to reach new heights of success in our business and, um, and to continue to climb and grow and not let, you know, our things that are kind of out of our control put us out of business or impact our business in such a way that we, you know, start questioning whether we can stay viable or not. You know, there's tons of things a stager can do for business and income. We're going to talk to somebody today who's grew a seven figure business very quickly, has diversified. And we're going to talk about how, or, you know, her journey, how she accomplished that and the importance of having other niches that you offer. So everything's not tied solely to the resale market. And um, so we're excited to hear from her. All right. I think that is, all my announcements. Let me just quickly scroll through. Yeah, uh, one more. Um, the magazine, our iHouse magazine, we do have a January issue we are working on. And so if you have any um, ideas for content or concepts, please let me know. You can email me at jenny at iahsp.com and um, you know share ideas, whether we use them for January or the future um, um, issues coming up. You know, we'd love to have some input from our members as far as what you would like to see in the magazine. So January issues in underway. Catherine Swan uh, is working on it with me. And so we're excited to have our second issue released to our members at that time. And it'll have, you know, featured service, featured stagers, other topics, a lot of, uh, you know, kicking off the year with business planning and so forth will be in there. So it'll be a great issue. And lastly, I just want to ask you, what are you doing to market yourself for the holidays? So this is something that um, I do every year. So this is a candy bag. Let's see, move this way. So this is just, so inside here is candy that I actually make. So I'm not suggesting you all have to get a candy recipe, but it is called Nut Crunch Candy. So we put it in the bags and then these go to clients, um, you know, neighbors and so forth too. But there's certain things you can do that don't have to be expensive to just let people know that you're thinking about them. And I know it might be kind of hard to do drop-offs because people aren't necessarily in their offices, but where there's a will, there's a way, right? So find a way to be able to recognize and appreciate your clients this year. Um, you know, I've given out a, in my Christmas newsletters or just Christmas emails, marketing pieces, a 10% off coupon. I've done that for years. And you know, if everybody redeemed the coupon, you know, yeah, it would be a lot of money potentially that I'm giving away, but it's a way to say thank you to the clients. And over the years of all the coupons as if that I have given out, I've only been redeemed a handful of times. That's the truth. And so the idea of giving somebody a 10% off or some sort of a, a 
dollar amount off their next staging. And I always exclude um, inventory, that piece of it, and do it on the service side. But that's just something, you know, that doesn't cost you any money to put together. You can just do a graphic image and send that out if you don't have the ability to, to purchase something for your clients. I mean, some people might do gift baskets, but just do something for your marketing. And, um, you know, be clever this time of year. There's some marketing pieces on our site that you can tap into and use and uh, personalize, if you will. So don't let the month go by without doing something to thank your clients, wish them a happy holiday season, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and so forth. And um, because, you know, appreciation goes a long way in our industry. All right. So I'm going to bring our special guest and our special guest is Nikki Watson. So Nikki, it should be counting down for you. Yes. Here she is. Hey, I'm I'm getting, what's happening? You're like, you're like in a strobe light. Do you want to, do you want to try to come back in? Yes. Okay. She's going to exit, come back in. She looks because she's like, um, I don't know if that was on purpose. I thought maybe she could do like a special little thing. So she's, she's on uh, Nikki Watson is from the Dallas market. She owns a company called the design squad. And, um, let me put her little promo up here. So she there, she's going to talk about her production and her journey and so forth. Um, I love the story. She, she started her company with $10 borrowed from her mother. She, she grossed close to $1 million in sales her first full year of business and teaches entrepreneurs how to capitalize on their winning thing. Uh, so she coaches business owners as well, but she's running this, you know, this company in Dallas runs and I'm going to have her tell, share whether she's actually still involved. I already kind of did that. Um, okay. So I can't see you. I don't, video. Know. I don't know what this is. So what, what um, browser are you on? Chrome. Chrome. Okay, that should work. Now we see you. Do you not yeah, matter? Yeah, but Am you're I black still black and white? white? Yeah, which is so weird. But at least you're not blinking. So this will be good. So <laughs> blinking again. <laughs> you're in the RT version of Nikki. We can see how colorful she's wearing this future in the green, your promo here. So it's beautiful. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this down. So go ahead and share for people who don't know who you are. Let them know and go ahead and give us kind of an intro. Okay. Well, um, hello, everybody. I am Nikki Watson. I am here in the Dallas, Texas market. I've been staging for about, I'd say about nine years. Um, I quit my job back in 2017. Can you see me? I can't see you now. Let's can't see, see me. Oh, okay. You are. Um, I quit my job back in 2017 to do this full time. And um, Lost you again. I just don't know what is going you know, on. Um, can you try it on your cell phone? Is that possible? I'll do that. Yeah, come in on I'll your phone. That. So just make sure you download the app and then come in on your phone. That might work better. Okay. Okay, all right. Sorry. Um, I'll just keep talking. You know, I don't have to stop filling the airspace. So while we wait for Nikki to come back. Okay. Um, Sonia, yeah, we're gonna, she's going to come in on our phone because I do want you guys to be able to see her talking. So, um, she does have a very large business in Dallas, and um, I do have some of her pictures here I'm going to share with you. Sometimes when people, when people have a really large operation and they're turning out, like she has 100 properties staged at any given time to be able to tell you the numbers. That's very impressive, and maybe even more than that. There was At one point, she posted on Facebook an image of all the stagings they had out, and there's tabs, like magnetic tabs for each one, and there were just a ton of them. And she, you know, she counted all them up and she gives the number as it's a hundred and something. So you, know, you kind of think like, well, does the quality suffer of the staging? So I just wanted to show you some of her work here. Um, this is very beautiful. You know, look at the, the, first of all, the picture is really stunning as far as the perspective, um, but excellent, excellent work. Um, here is another shot. This is a staging and design. So design quad. So it's design quad. I said design squad. It's design quad. I love that name. Um, I wish I thought of it. You know, it's a great name. And so beautiful work. I love the blues and the gold with that. Here's a really beautiful picture. I love the artwork. This is a stunning picture as well. And it could easily be used like as a marketing piece. And so you can see that, you know, even though her company does high volume, they still take the time to stylize the staging for the uh, appropriate target buyer. And of course, Probably the property price as well. So here she is. But you need to. Um, okay, there you are. So if you have your computer, mute it because we're getting feedback, and then we'll should be good to go. 
Oops, we lost her. <laughs> I love live shows. <laughs> um, okay, so she'll be coming back. Um, and so let's see, let's show you a couple more of her pictures here. This is one. Very nice, very sleek um, kitchen. And I love the, the settings here for the counter bar. And then this one I pulled. Love the sectional and I love these tables, the drum tables. So again, beautiful work. All right, here she is. Finally. Can you hear me? Yes, we can oh. see you. Hey, I love that. Is that a red wall or pink? It's pink, right? It's you my, my office. Love it. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love it. Pretty bright in here. <laughs> and I love it. It's great. Nice energy. I wear that color. You, you look great in that color too, because you're like the, the, the jewel tone, the winter, the colors, right? Okay. So let's, let's start with, go ahead and, and um, tell everybody who you are, where you're from. Okay. Okay. So again, I am Nikki Watson from <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Um, I was born and raised here in Texas. Our market is really um, kind of similar to some of the other markets here in, in our region. Uh, San Antonio, I think Austin is pretty, pretty similar. Houston's a little bit more uh, fast paced, but uh, we have a pretty normal market. Um, we, we have the trends that go up and down and you can kind of watch them, you know, when they're coming. So this is a, this is a great market to be in. So we have um, about 200 houses now, 215 oh to be exact. So we have 215 houses staged stage at any time. They rotate all the time. Sometimes when they come back, some of the stuff that's out, I'm like, Oh my God, that came from when I first started, we got to get rid of it. So we do sales twice a year and kind of keep the inventory fresh, but stuff, sometimes things just go from house to house and I don't see it for a year. It's crazy. So, um, it's not funny. <clears throat> sometimes, when we, sometimes when we, sometimes when we, when we buy stuff, it'll, it'll, it'll immediately, like we purchase it immediately goes into a house and I don't really register. So it'll come back like, I don't remember buying that. I don't, where did this stuff come from? So it's sort of like, <laughs> Wow. So uh, we've grown pretty, pretty fast. Um, like I said, I, I, in 2017, I quit my job and started doing this full time, was deathly afraid of it. Like everybody else is when, when you're starting a business, you don't know what to expect. So um, coming into the business, kind of being around it and seeing people succeed is what fueled me to say, okay, I can do this. This is, this is going to work for me. And I, I kind of went from there. That's so, <clears throat> 215 houses. That's amazing. So, um, we'll talk about logistics, keeping track of like, I'm sure some people are like, Oh my God, I do five houses and I'm like, I can't keep track of my stuff. So, um, yeah. so, but your journey, so you, you started in 2017. So I started in 2002 and, you know, ha have grown, um, back then our biggest challenge was that people didn't know what staging was. And so there was, there was a lot of education for agents in, the, in particular markets. And then, you know, things changed and grew from there um, for you to go from zero to seven figures in a year and a year and a half ish is uh, very impressive. So let's talk about, um, you know, you said what spurred you on was other people in the industry doing that, but um, for most new people, they're sort of like, I want to be a stager. They might see it on TV and, and then they're like, okay, you know, now what do I do? But you must have had like a real focus from the very beginning of where you wanted to, your business to go, or did it just sort of gum up? I don't it know <laughs> It kind of evolved on me. So when I first started, I didn't know where to start. Of course, a lot of people go to training, which is awesome. But at the time in my life, I didn't, I couldn't afford it. I could, I just didn't have the money to do it. So I bought Barb Schwartz's book and uh, how to build a successful staging business. And that's all I really knew about staging was from her book. So I read it. She had contracts in the back of there and I was like, oh my God, this is all I need. Like, this is it. And I started, after I read the book, I called myself a stager. I was official <laughs> after I'd read, that was my certification. I certified myself through her book. And um, I just really adored the industry. It was kind of new about 2008 is really when I started looking at it and, and getting interested in it, but I didn't do it for several years. Um, and once I read her book and kind of got myself pumped up that I wanted to do it. Um, that's when really when I started building a business and I didn't have the foresight of this is 
I wanted this to be a big, huge thing. It was almost like I was creating myself a job, not really a business. So it's those are two totally different things. Now it's a business, but before I, it was just a job. What did you do? What did you do before? So you were you were working. So what was your field before? Uh, flooring. I was a flooring sales rep. So okay. I would I would go out and market to realtors. So I already had these relationships. So I went and built these relationships with realtors, investors. Investors were my main uh, clients because they wanted fast. And my sales approach was. I'm getting in here and I'm getting out and we're we're not going to have too many discussions about it. I'm going to sell you and this is we're going to put these floors in tomorrow. So my sales process in in flooring was really fast and to the point and I kind of translated that over to the the staging. Which is important. Responsiveness is super important. Um <clears throat> people don't want to know like you can't get it done for three weeks and sometimes stages use it as like a status saying like i'm booked out for three weeks i'm like this is a death okay. they're gonna go find someone else right right they'll move on quick so you can't say i'm not available till next week <clears throat> right that's gonna kill your business you have to be available whenever they want it so i learned so, that pretty early <laughs> so do you do most do you do only vacants or do you also do occupied we do both. So we do occupied and we do the, the normal checklist. So walk through checklist and we send it to the agent and the, and the seller. Um, a lot of times, and I use this example a lot it, we're for bachelors. So bachelors will not have a dining room or they won't have artwork or they won't or have color. pillows on the couch. <laughs> Nothing, no color, nowhere. So we always have to bring in extra stuff and we'll put that in the report. If we need to bring in uh, this much inventory, it'll be this much you know, for the duration of the listing. And then we, we go from there, but a lot of times people, we can use their, their stuff. And we do maybe four or five, um, occupies a week. Our main business is, is vacant. So let's talk about your, let's talk about your design quad. So who's, you have a team obviously. So yes. talk about, is it a small mighty team? Cause I was trying to look, I, was, I wanted to pull a picture of your team, but I couldn't find a current picture. So who do you have? Let's identify the players on the team. So it's, it's pretty small. So we have um, an office administrator, um, Haley, and then she has an assist assistant, um, Angela. She just kind of started full time. Um, and then we have a lead stager, Amy, and then she has three assistants. So she usually, Amy is a dynamite person. She can stage a house in an hour and she wants to do a lot of it by herself. So the stage and assistants are kind of just really assistants. Like they're just there to fluff towels and put out the towels and put the accessories where they go. And she's like going through the house and doing everything else. She does a lot of our purchasing. So she's kind of our go-to and she picks out, you know, picks out everything that goes into the property for the guys to load up. So we do three vacants a day every day. So by the in the morning time, she'll load at least two if there's large ones and then she'll they'll come back and get the third one. So uh, we have movers. So we have three movers, two that works with us every day and then one that kind of does our pickups. So we have a lot of pickups, of course, because everything is rotating so much. So we have um, the owner of the company usually does our pickups. Um, and then we have, um, I think that's it. So three assistants, lead that stager, is powerful team on the staging side. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're you're very lean as far as the team is to crank out oh, yeah. that many that many stagings. And I love when they roll. Um, and that was a term like I don't know, I don't remember if other people use that term, but when you destage and you roll to uh, another property, that's kind of the best thing. You know, it's stuff just goes. It doesn't ever come back. It just keeps moving around. And we we sometimes will like set it up a little bit differently so it's not like cookie cutter but that's because i don't want all this stuff coming back right and all of a sudden it's like too full at the end and we're like oh my gosh you know we got to get the stuff out so um so yeah so how do you know how do you keep track of all your projects do you use a system oh, or spreadsheet we do we use trello so uh, trello is a really good project management tool we've been using it for years um i think i first heard about it from a contractor so a contractor um, told me about it and he used it for his jobs and and they have like loads and loads of boards and lots of, you know, they're, they're using it to the maximum capacity. We're probably just using a little bit of it, but it really helps because we use, we keep our um, boards by month and then we have each task or each house is a, a list. So if people are just now using Trello um, or just hearing about Trello, it is the best 
project management tool because we keep each card we have uh, or each category we have um, the whole process so it'll start with a preview so the person that previews will go and and look at the house they'll take pictures and put it directly into the into the app um, and then it moves from um, need need the contract sent when the when it the contract is sent it moves to waiting on payment when it goes to payment and it's uh, after payment it says staging scheduled so then once it goes to scheduling then we put it on the calendar we you know get with the movers and then they, they kind of um, work everything out there if we need anything special they'll put notes in there say hey these people want a nursery or something that's out of the ordinary offices we do all the time but something that would be special a playroom a craft room those things the the person that previews definitely has to put that in the notes it so we can know what to take to the property um and we can do we can get a really good idea of what's needed once we see the the pictures in the in the system so i just and you can you can note you can um, tag people in there you can put notes in there um hey this guy said we nicked up their wall and you can tag anybody and it's um, in lifetime hey, that oh, sorry their their chat their chat thing is in lifetime too so when you're communicating with your team mm -hmm. it's not there's no delay right which i like it's about Trello. Really and, yeah. it, and it's it dings your phone and it sends you an email so you're you're not going to miss it like this is really a good a good um, project we use um we use that and we use joist joist is the um, estimating thing so we send out um, estimates on joist and we upload them in trello it so you can upload pdfs or anything in in trello so it's just a great great tool that's kind of how we keep up with it and after the house is staged they take the after picture so th of every room that we did so we kind of know what's in the house and you know what inventory is there <laughs> and so and so who who is the one managing the trello board is that is that a separate person or is it like anybody whoever is taking the lead on the, the staging or that would be um the office so um Haley and angela are kind of in charge of of the trello board and they kind of uh, they have to do all the scheduling out of there so they'll they'll put reminders in you can put um, you know, time, time things. It's, it's really neat. So we've so been Felicia, using... oh, so Felicia Frazier is asking, do you have your own trucks or do you use a separate moving company? Um, so we use another um, separate moving company. They charge us a flat hourly rate. Um, we've been with them, I think now it's five years. And so they're, they're part of our family. They, they're here all the time on the weekends when we need help, they'll come in here and organize the warehouse. Like we're just, they're just a part of the the family. They are a separate company, uh, but we we have our the our trucks wrapped with our company information. But it's their so they that's how close we are. We're we're like together. So and I think it's just because we've been they've been working with us so long. They're like we're not going anywhere. So this is this is the situation we have. But they are separate. They are something. So, because so, well, let's talk about let's talk about trucks for a second. Because I talked about this at our conference. Like, do you rent? Do you lease? Do you own? At what point do you start bringing that in house? And so, usually it's a dollar amount. Like when you're paying out more than, I think it's like fifty to seventy thousand a year in labor to take it in house to bring bring that in house. So you've you've made. And obviously, you're making great money. So um, you've made the conscious choice to keep it third party. And so, talk about why um, what the benefits to that are. I, I think because the, a lot of the liability for me, um, I, I did do the numbers and I'm looking at gas, I'm looking at tolls, I'm looking at maintenance, I'm looking at, you know, all the, and the, the manpower that it would, if I brought in somebody, it would not make sense for me to, to pay somebody hourly or because we work super long hours and these guys are, you know, all on the clock, round the clock, pretty much. Um, I think it just, for me, it worked out better for them to continue to be the third part. I did think about it several times because I, I probably could have bought lots of trucks by now, but for them to kind of take the liability insurance, they have, you know, their insurance. So that, that was my decision. A lot of people have their own in-house and that's cool, but I just didn't want to keep, you know, have that liability. And I think that that was the one, uh, probably a category that was missing from our lineup. So you rent, the pain in the butt for renting is 
standing in line, getting their truck availability. We don't have a truck available. You're shifting things around. You're at their mercy. The trucks break down. We used U-Haul. We had a corporate account with them. So we had a better rate, but they were just so unreliable. And um, we had trucks with bald tires. We got stuck in the ice. I mean, which is ridiculous. So the, the category that we then should have included before we got to the leasing was partnering with the company. That, that's a really great option. Yeah. Um, you know, just the insurance piece of it, because it is because what I what we're doing right now is we're doing the leasing option, and then I can purchase the option to purchase, and it actually um, cut my costs in half based on how I was having to pay for things before. Yeah. But you're right, the insurance piece of it. Um, I think my my in staging insurance was like fifty to seven, maybe a hundred bucks a month. With the truck, it's almost four hundred yeah. a month to cover the liability on that, and then you have the, the truck itself. You know, the payments were pretty reasonable. We did it through the Penske program, but then you also have to have your guy DOT certified. So there's a lot of these things you're just not really aware of. So, um, it, it, we're, you know, we're still saving money based on what I was doing before, but I think, you know, partnering with the moving company, and that's a smart option because then you don't have necessarily the responsibility. And I, and I love that they are wrapped their, your trucks with your info. Yes. Um, that really shows that, that, that commitment and that partnership. So, um, that's very smart. And before, um, before they, uh, before I met them, I actually met them during a staging. I bought some new furniture. It was my very first time buying furniture. And um, the delivery guy um, asked me how often I do it. And I was like, oh, about once a week. You know, I'm, I'm a stager and probably, it was probably less than that. And he said, okay, well, do you need some help? So you want, because I was in a U-Haul at the time. Do you need some help? I was like, sure. And I was like, but how much are you going to charge me? So we negotiated a great rate. And of course, you know, they throw hours in, but um, it was just, it was just a great alignment. I think whenever we got together and he actually, he had like one truck at the time. I think he's got five now. So he's doing, doing really good, but he, he works with other stagers as well. So we do, if other stagers are here in our market, I'll tell them, Hey, call him and he'll help you out. So we kind of, you know, as a community in our, in our market, we kind of help each other out and say, Hey, this is something I, I do do you want to use it or you know do you need any help with that so just really smart and i love that it's a flat rate so those of you that are watching you know write down some questions you want us to ask nikki um you know keeping that because then you can plan for that in the, the budgeting and the proposal pricing because when it's open-ended like we had um and, and we're still dealing with this issue but like with may or june i had we had two trucks running that day and one of them was ours and one was a rental and the rental person driving the rental truck didn't see a clearance bar to get into a condo parking thing and because it was blocked by a tree or something anyhow you haul hits that thing you haul is totally fine but that the pole rips out of this concrete wall mm. and crumbles and so it's like a ten thousand dollar repair oh and so God. um you know that was like an, an unfortunate you know incident but they ended up you know sitting there because the manager of the complex wouldn't let them leave so for like three hours, so tick tock, they're on the clock, three hours, three hours. So, it, you know, it, you end up spending a lot more as a stager when things go haywire um, versus just having a cap rate. So those of you that are, that are looking for, um, you know, arrangements with moving companies, do your best to try to lock in a flat rate so you can plan and budget for that. So Felicia, you said, what is Ebby? What is Ebby? Um, I don't know what that question is, Ebby. Oh, are they looking on my website? Um, are you looking on her website, Felicia? She might be. Yeah. <laughs> Abby is a uh, company, as a real estate company. Real estate company, Abby Holiday. Abby Holiday. So she's she's local. Um, she's probably got about 60 offices here in the market. So we have a special deal with them where we give them uh, special rates with photography. We have a um, one of their trainers is a photographer. So he kind of partners with us on, on their deal. So that's kind of, I think. Abby. Abby. She looked to be over a hundred years old. It was amazing. And so um, Barb actually came and did a special seminar with them one time in Dallas, just for the agents for the two day ASP course for the real estate agents. And so, um, and you know, we, we taught ex exclusive through their company too. So I love when companies get it about staging and then they incorporate it as a standard service. So kudos to you for, for getting that business because that's, that's huge. And they're, they're, they're regional in your market. They haven't branched at other places, but they really have, I don't know, you said something like 60 locations. Yes. A lot of locations. locations. And they're a Berkshire Hathaway company now, um, but they have different branches. So they have Dave Perry Miller, um, 
Ebby and there's another brand. So they have like three brands of her company that, that are here and they, um, and they're amazing agents. They're all like very professional and they're, um, some of our best agents in our market. Now, Keller Williams is the best training, I think, and, and they train, Keller Williams trains them to stage first, which I love, like we are right. all on board. So we, we try to partner with companies that get it, but if they don't get it, we'll come in and train them. Yeah. And it's great because Gary Keller in his book, The Millionaire Listing, um, Real, Millionaire Real Estate Agent, the MREA book, um, he talks about staging. There's a successful staging strategies chapter. And in that, and he mentions IHOS, our association, and he talks about Barb as well. So I, I, I love that aspect too, because they're they're talking about it to their agents. It doesn't mean that every single agent's going to do it. We still have to educate them, especially in a hot market. They're like, I don't need to stage that house. I'm like, you just left a bunch of money on the table for your client. Where's your fiduciary responsibility? So, um, but I, but I love that too. And so that's, um, they are definitely pro pro staging and, you know, it still surprises me when I come across agents. Oh, you know, you don't need to do that. That doesn't work. Or, you know, that's not going to make an impact. And it's, you know, it's just sort of like, and I was just, who was I just, um, I just wrote this. I think my point was like, why, um, Oh, it was about state agents who, who, you know, think, well, they're, we call them stagents. Like they're going to stage it themselves. Right. Yes. And so, you know, about, oh, let's see, it's 2020. So um, two or three years ago, we took out the part in the ASP real estate course where agents were being taught placement and, and the whole process of staging. We were teaching them instead consultation because they can talk to their clients and do things. But when it comes to the physical part of staging, they really need to bring a professional in. So I made a point of like, you know, they bring a professional photographer, they have a house cleaner, they have the radio person, they have all these professional people that are their title, you know, why is it that, that the stager, you know, the hat that the just realtor decides to put on is the stager hat? I can do that myself. And like the amount of time it takes for them to diddle around in a house and probably do it, you know, maybe these, some of them do an okay job. If they're dragging furniture and it's like, your time is worth so much more than that. You need to be marketing to get more business because you're, you're saving the amount that they think that they're going to save or just have fun playing around in a house is, you know, they need to be getting more business, right? I had a, a, a set of agents. They're actually from Ebby. And I tell this story all the time. They know I, I, I tell this story. Um, they had the bright idea they're going to stage a townhouse, townhome. So I staged one and they had, they had given themselves the task of doing the two on each side. So one of them took one side and the other one took, took the other side. And I just came to check on them. I was like, Hey, you guys need anything, you know, just kind of building that relationship. Cause I just met them, you know, and didn't have a real good relationship with them yet. And they were there for till two 30 in the morning. Oh my and gosh. The next day they called me and they said, they'll never do that again because they should have just let me do it. I was like, well, yeah, I somebody's just want to call you stagents, but you are stagents. Yeah, and 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 it's not that you know agents like uh, we have a um a, a colleague, and he actually is educated as a professional stager, master stager, and then also does a bang up job with his real estate side, and um, so he is qualified to stage his own properties. He has all the warehouse information, so warehouse items and furniture and so forth, and so his properties are to standard, if you if you will, like they they look good versus. Um, the, when I use that word, it's like the, this agents that, you know, they throw some silk plants like here in Denver. I mean, and I put these pictures up on, on the website and so forth. They'll throw pillows on the floor with a throw in the living room and be like, I staged. Oh my and I'm like, God. or they'll put like, they'll put like a, I have a picture where somebody put like a little pocket truck on the ground on, in a bedroom and, and put some lean, some games, board games in the window. Oh, and then they thought it was staging. I'm like, that's not staging. And so. It's embarrassing, you know, when I, when I see that kind of stuff and um, it, it really diminishes what we do as an industry. And so being able to keep that message going that we're here to make them more efficient and you know, we make we make money on the staging, but they make way more money listing and selling a house. And we right. have to crank out 215 houses at a time, you know, in order to crack the nut you need financially versus if you were a realtor, you wouldn't have to sell 215 houses to get to the financial level you want. Right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's why we have to hustle for the business. So let's talk about getting the business. And so you obviously you had the flooring company. You still have that. So you are diversified um, with your services. And we want to talk about you do design, you do staging, you do the flooring. What else other services do you offer? 
Um, that's that's really for the staging side is really what we do. Um, we do a lot of co color consultations for investors because they don't know what to do. We tell them about you know what the trends are as far as flooring. Uh, I suggest if if people are not or stagers are not familiar with that those kind of things, go and go visit the local flooring store and just stay a couple hours and talk to somebody about what people are buying because they know what's what's hot. They know the new trends and, and what people are into right now and what's selling houses. So if they want to educate themselves on, um, you know, just, just what people are putting in so they can go and talk to a, an investor and say, hey, I think this would be really cool because this is what's selling at this price point. You sound like the expert and you can sell your service. That's a totally different service than just staging the house. So we do that. Um, we have a finishes finishes and uh, flooring and finishes service that we do for investors. It's the same thing as a consultation. So we just go out and kind of tell them paint colors. Hey, they're going away from gray. They're going back to beige. This is this is the new color to choose. And that way it's just it give us something else to offer. So with your investors, do you do you belong to like an investor group or how did you, you know, how did you start with the did, obviously with the flooring, you started working with them. So then um, of your business base, how much, what percentage of your vacant properties are state investor properties versus just regular residential? Probably 50, 50. So we do a lot of investment properties. And I think because I do belong to a lot of the investor groups, just like we have stager groups on online, there's investor groups in every area. So just, you know, join all the groups that you okay, can. So let's stop, stop for a second. So let's, 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 let's repeat what you just said. Because there's so many people like, I don't know where to get the business. So you're just yes. like, there's a lot of investor groups say that again online. There's probably about 10 in our area. We're a pretty large area, but there's about 10 investor groups with about 10,000 uh, members in each group. So that's a lot of people that you're reaching if you are in those groups and posting. Hey, anybody need a stager? Here I am. Um, right post a picture of your work. And I, I get a lot of business just doing that. So um, you can put price in if you want to or not. You can just say, hey, I'm available to stage your next flip. These people are looking for somebody. If they have a connect contact that they are dealing with now and they're really not having a good experience, they'll be open. So um, just kind of taking advantage of those opportunities. My very first sale is a flooring flooring um, specialist, I went down to the courthouse. So everybody knows that you can go to the courthouse and buy property. I didn't know where to buy, where to sell floors. So I was like, where do people go if they're trying to, to fix up a house? And I thought about going to the auction. So I went down to the courthouse and I just started passing out my cards. I didn't know anything about floors. I had never sold anything before, nothing. But I was like, this is probably where they hang out. This is I think they'll be here. There's hundreds of people there and I am so nervous. I've never done anything like this. And I just started passing out my cards. Those people called me. I had so much business within a week that I didn't even, everybody's like, where are you getting these calls? And I'm like, well, I passed out my right. cards with this investor thing. And then I started joining their group. So they do have meetups just like we have our you know, association meetings, they have meetups and um, different groups or people that are very experienced in it or in people that just want to learn how to do it. So some of those people are on their first or they they may never, ever do it, but the, they will know somebody that is doing it actively or they will be the person that's doing it actively and you can, you can market to them. So I would go to the meetings, just hang out in the back. Oh, I'm a stager. Here's my card. And I, again, that is a way to get your name out. And they just kept seeing me all the time. They're like, hey, do you want to talk? Do you want to talk about staging? Sure, I do. And I'll get up there and talk about staging, how to how to stage your flip or what's the best way to get people in. And people just started calling. So that's how my business grew as fast as, as it did because I was going to... I was actively going to look at, look for business. That's, and that's so important. I just wrote myself a note I, because where you're talking and we talk a lot about fear, you know, the, you know, rising above, face everything and rise or forget everything and run. Well, I just put down the word fearless because that's how you have been with your approach. You know, 
a lot of teachers or just so people in general, the fear of rejection keeps them from going and doing something like that. So and I, when we talk about what would be the worst thing somebody would be like, be like, hey, what's your card? And they'd like slap it out of you. That would be the worst thing that could happen, right? <laughs> right. So, and you don't die from that. You're like, you know, you know, that's not a great experience. But the fact is, that there's plenty of people that will say yes. So you've got to go where the where the clients are. And and of course, right now with COVID, you know, like people aren't having the meetings necessarily, but they're online, right. they're virtual. And um, there's a group called ICOR here in Colorado, and I spoke at their con conference and then did a session on on trends like material trends and what's coming. And I love that you get involved up front with them because you're right. A lot of them pick colors and. Um, stain colors. They they do a design. They don't really have any proper guidance, and it looks terrible. So being able to capture that piece is so smart. Um, so remodeling consultation, or like if you're making you know flooring finishes, colors, countertops, we can select all that stuff for the you know help give guidance and be paid for that, and then pick up the staging piece. Right. So if, very if you're smart. Really good at it. If you already know that kind of stuff, think about selling subscriptions. So we do have a service that we just offer to like our top people that we know they're doing doing houses over and over again. And we sell a subscription where you pay this price and we'll come out to all your properties for the year. Say wow. you have access to us for a year. So I, I read it in a book and it was just a great idea. And I was thinking that is that is just awesome. So they were talking about pool companies. So pool companies, they have slow seasons They because, you know, pools are closed during, during the colder months. So they sold a subscription that during opening season and closing that they would come out and do a service. But you signed up for this subscription. I was like, that is brilliant. And the same thing for us. We all have something that somebody's willing to pay for and have access to on a yearly basis. So that's something that, that we thought about, Hey, we can just tell them we'll come out and help them with, pick, you know, picking out tile for the showers or whatever it is. If you're an expert in that kind of stuff and it's easy to become an expert in it. everything on the internet. <laughs> so if you're an expert in that stuff, you know, well, you know, and that's really smart because well. they, um, they like to know up front what the costs are going to be. The investors, they're very, really, very price sensitive. And so yeah. what you don't want is like they spend all their money on the, you know, finishes and, you know, and then they don't have the budget for the staging. But I, I, I love that um, that concept. And then do you cap it like zero to 50? Is this amount 50 to 100 properties is X amount? Do you do it that way for them? Yeah, for, for our top clients. So we kind of know, uh, we've gauged how many they'll do. Uh, we have a couple that just do from, 10 to 20. We have, we do have one company that does about a hundred. So we do um, from this amount to this amount, it's this price. So there's levels. So, um, but we, that big company, they're all in, they want us to come all the time. Like we're there with them a lot and, but it's worth it. That's just an extra kind of a re yeah. recurrent um, income. So. So, so as a business owner, you're working on your business. You know, you're not out in the field doing the staging. And so it sounds like you're not out. And this is the first time we've really talked at length, but you are, it sounds like you're the face of the company. You're the key marketer as far as the relationship connector. And so, um, and it's, isn't it, I mean, at some point, like at what point did you have to make a decision? Like I can't be in the field. I have to make a decision, to either run the business or be the creative. So at what point did you do that? Um, I think right, right before, um, but right before I started, quit working at my job. I had, my business started growing a little bit um, more than I thought it would. So it's, I was doing more stagings and I was like, I need some help on the, the back end because of the, the sending the contracts and doing the estimates. It was getting and doing consultations. Of course, the checklist is crazy amount of times and all of that. I was like, I can't do this and um, actually stage the house. So that's kind of when when it got to a certain point of growth. So I have a set of 26 year old twins. You said you have a 25 year old. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> so I had a tw set of twins and one of my uh, twins had just graduated college and she was working for me in the office and my business was growing and growing and growing. And it came to a point where she's like, I can't do this. I quit. She quit on me. So I my daughter to did too. <laughs> <laughs> she was my lead oh, stager. Now, are, are your twins identical? They are, yes. I'm, yeah. I'm an identical twin too. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. And my daughter, she's a she's a year and a half older than Stephen, but she was my lead stager, and so now she's um in California right now, and I, you know, she wants to do photography, but yeah, so she's, 
And that's sad. I'm like, I'm like, you're supposed to inherit the company. You're supposed to take over and run it. Me too. I Many like, tears. Is, I cried a lot. <laughs> They quit on me. So that's kind of where I figured, I'm like, this is really getting huge. This is, you know, more than I can handle. So I brought in that office admin and then a lady emailed me from, she was moving here from Iowa, Iowa. I always get Iowa and Ohio mixed up, but I, it was Iowa. Um, and she was getting a divorce and moving in with her brother down in a suburb here in Dallas. And she said, I've had a staging company for seven years. I just want to come and see if I can work for you. And I'm like, I can't pay. I don't know how I'm going to pay you. And she, I told her, just come, you know, let's work it out. Let's see how it works for a couple months. If not, you can just kind of go get your job or whatever. And um, she came and within a couple of months, she she got my ideas. She like everything that I would do in, in the staging, she does it. This is Amy. And she just kind of, I, she was me replicated. And at first I was kind of uneasy. Of course, everybody is because it's your brand and you want it to be you. Um, but I was like, I really need to just kind of let her go and do that part. I'm okay at this, but she's great at this. So let me let her do it. And then let me do this other stuff that I'm, I feel like I'm good at too. So marketing's always been my strong suit. And I felt like that was what I was supposed to be doing instead of actually doing the staging job. Staging jobs is easy. I can do that. I can pick out stuff all day long. But the, the marketing piece and growing the business is where I was more comfortable. And that's where um, that's kind of the turning point. And it all happened within a month. So they both came on in June of 2017. Then I quit my job in October of 2017. So that was just like all that planning all the yeah. time it was just is going and have, into and you have to be business. fearless because it's like you know you you it's some people think like well i have to get the company to the point where um i can afford to pay for these people or whatever you know it's it's taking a risk right because bringing somebody in for the logistics side and handling that then makes you freeze up your time to do what you enjoy which is the marketing and sales side and then the creative i agree that um, you know, I, I like doing the creative setup and so forth, but I don't have to be on the field. I mean, the team knows what to do. Right. And so if it's a higher end house or like a, we've had quite a few occupied houses where it's been kind of complicated or sellers that are um, older. So then I do show up to kind of handhold and make sure things go as planned. But um, I pulled myself out of the creative, you know, several years ago and then, you know, had a, seven stagers on the team that could handle things depending on how much they wanted to to do. And then my, my, my daughter was the one of them. And so she's gone and, her ex-boyfriend was another one. They were both trained. He's gone. And so I'm like, the team kind of shrank with COVID. So I got to get that back up because I, I, I don't mind being in the field, but it is to me, my time is more um, best invested in the sales and marketing side for sure. That's true. That's so, true. That's so, really good. <clears throat> what do you think has been your biggest, um, the, the biggest thing that, that propelled you forward to allow you to get to grow so quickly um, to where you are right now from the, where you started, what would you attribute that to? It doesn't be just one thing, but what would you attribute it to? I think, I really think getting out of the way. So getting out of the way of the daily, everyday um, items and going into another role. So kind of getting out of my own way. I had a job that was, staging was my job. And then I was willing to run a business. So I went, I transitioned from having a job to running the business. And that was the thing that made the company grow as fast as it did, because then I was in a position to go out and shake some hands, get some more people, some business in, and then it just, it exploded from there. Well, yeah. And, and I'm sure there might be some people watching you. They're like, I don't like going to networking meetings. I don't like doing, they don't like doing the, the face. You're like, you're total expressive driver temperament. I can tell I me mean, the fuchsia and you can see it my favorite colors back here. <laughs> right. And so, so you're a great, you know, face of the company and getting out there. You, again, fearless, you pass your card, you network, you don't have any challenge and, you know, getting in with the crowd, you immediately can engage. And there's people who are shyer. So then maybe they need to then, the person they're looking for is a, is a front man. It right. can do the sales. And so being able to find something like that. So identifying, I, I think what you really hit the nail on the head is identifying what you're best at and making yes. sure that you do get yourself out of the way and stay not, I'm not saying stay in your lane, but allow other people to step into where, you know, to the roles that you either don't want to do or aren't as good at um, doing. Yeah. Good at. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Amy was, Amy came in and she was amazing. Like she just, 
she was perfect for that. And I was like, well, I'll just let her do this and I'll do this. And it just, it just grew. So my last question would be, so you have your team. So how do you, um, you know, the retention is always a big question. You know, um, I've had, when I was in California, my company again had seven stages, but I had took like 10 to find six good ones plus myself. So there's always the risk, like you're going to bring someone on and they're going to learn new secrets and then they're going to go off yeah. on their own. And so, so how do you, how did you kind of overcome that? Um, I don't think we've ever had that issue. I think that I paid w really well. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And um, we just kind of have an understanding. We, we work more like a family than, you know, just boss. I'm, I'm bossing them around. I kind of let them be creative and kind of run their daily activities. And I'm not uh, uh, micromanaging. And I think yeah, that makes a big difference. Yeah. Because people that feel like they they're not trusted will you know they'll it's not they'll pleasant that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to. I mean, the delegation and the release of the control is so important. If anyone's ever you know to, to grow beyond just yourself, you do have to trust. And when you train people to you know, she said she got your look. She does a great job, so you can trust that the finished product is is to your brand standard. Um, and but the first thing you said that you pay really well, so money motivates people. Um, you know, and if they feel like they are being undervalued, they will go look for something else. And so, right. um, you know, ultimately the company owner, the one running the company, owning the company, you deserve to make the most. However, you do want to pay your team members, you know, pay them well so that they, they do stay and that they are loyal. So right. I think that's great. So any last words? I can't believe we're out of time, but any last words for those watching how to build um, a seven figure? Well, I just feel like if they, if somebody's just starting out and you're kind of nervous about it, I just think just start it. Just go start, get your marketing material in order. Just don't wait on anything. Don't wait on anybody's approval. Um, that's a, that's been a big thing for me is just going to do it. Just And then, and then just let's quickly just touch on, cause I saw that in your little promo thing. Um, you do coaching and um, other, what are you, what are you offering for Because I'm sure like a lot of us people go, how did you get started? I used to realize like I should, develop a little things training so I can teach these people because I'm telling everybody already. So I may as well monetize it. Right? right. So I do, I do a staging class and we do it about once every two months and probably about five or six people are in it each time. And we do, we've got some great stagers in our market and they, they come by all the time. They've got lots of questions. They shadow uh, the stagers. So we're pretty open here. We're an open door. So we have a lot of people that come by and kind of, um, hang out with us and and we love it. We we're kind I of I think like that's great. Small stager community, you know. You know, and I and I, I really love your heart for that because there's there are some that are like this, like get away from me. Oh you know, yeah. oh I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk to you like you know somebody enters the market and they are naturally gonna call like how do you can I can I can take you to coffee, whatever it is and they say, oh, I'm not I'm not gonna help you with your business. Good luck. And I just feel like that's so selfish in a lot of ways but it's also silly because if it's relationship based business which we are then my clients are going to be based on my connection with them relationship which means that other people aren't going to come in and steal them because they don't have the same relationship right so as long as you're taking care of your clients there, there's no risk and you and know we get a lot of referrals from other stagers if there's something that they can't do they'll send it to us and if it's something that we consultations uh don't necessarily like we will send it that other way so we have a we have a actual another business um owner as another stager that we send consultations to all the time she she basically is our go-to person for that she's really good at it and we trust her with our clients and we just send it i mean that's kind of i think the the bonus of building relationships with other people in your industry. There's yeah. no, there shouldn't be competition yet. Yeah, there's lots, there's probably a hundred stagers in our market, but I don't think, I don't believe in being in competition with them. There's so much business out here. So. Yeah. I call it cooperation collaborative. We just picked up two vacants from a stager who, um, you know, had had the clients, but the rental resource that she was going to use, which has court furniture, they ran out of furniture. Oh, no. And I said, I, yeah, they were unable to handle her projects. They, we're not talking, we're talking condos. We're not talking big properties. And so she contacted me and I said, I, I agreed to give her a referral fee for that. But yeah, so um, I think keeping the relationships open and not being like negative competition person. Because, um, you know, it is, I mean, the industry, we make a big impact in the real estate industry. 
Um, however, we're a real small community. When you take a look at the numbers, maybe I said globally, maybe 10,000 or fewer professional stagers in the world. And, wow. and yet there's millions of um, real estate agents and then realtors. So we, we make a big impact, but we're a little community. So we can't afford to be isolating ourselves. And you know what I mean? Right. So I, I'm, you know, so I, I, I love your heart for that and um, your mission. And so, and I, and I, you know, I, I know you're a believer, so am I. And so I love that as aspect as well. Cause I feel like that plays into it, that the mission is not all about money. It's about helping people and serving and yes. for the greater good. So, yeah. Yeah. We, we do a lot of, um, there's a ministry here. Um, it's called Exodus ministries and ladies are coming from jail or rehab and they live there for a year and they kind of, um, kind of get their self back together. It's a hardcore ministry. They go to Bible study. They got to save money. They got to get a job. So we do a lot of, um, we let the girls come over and kind of learn a skill. So if it's something, we'll have them work in the warehouse or we'll have them sending out emails all day or something that will add to them. My mom does a, a sewing class over there at Exodus. That's so great. So it's, it's so much fun, but it's it's something more than just the business. And it, and it feels like you're pouring into, uh, you know, people that kind of need a second chance or needed something to believe in or believe in themselves. So we try to give them an opportunity to kind of learn something new and do something, something different. That's wonderful. I, I love that. And I, um, I, I want to kind of cycle back to where you said when you first wanted to get started that you wanted to take a class but couldn't afford it. And so what we've been doing is gifting scholarships through our um, Staging Industry Diversity Coalition with, I, um, with Deborah Plowd, and she's our diversity director for IHOSP. So if you do know of anybody that is interested in getting started in staging, that's the one thing I can do. I can I can help somebody get access to the industry because I don't I never want money to be a reason why somebody who really has a heart and a passion for staging to not be able to get started and, and to have a good foundation. And so um, I'm happy to connect with anybody that you that you know of and just kind of spread the word because that's that's an important part of um, when we started talking about the whole diversity and inclusivity. It's like, you know, income um, that can be a reason why people can't get started. And so we've already given out several scholarships and you know, um, I, I'm happy to be able to do that to help somebody get into the industry because we want, we want people who are excited and passionate and, That's you know, true. so, yeah. I love that. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Through, through, um, yeah. So I, I'm, and I, and I, I think, you know, challenge on uh, those you're watching, you know, think about how you can give back this season, you know, this holiday Christmas season, giving back to those. We just donated a bunch of our bedding that we were getting rid of um, to the homeless shelters and so forth to be able to, um, rather than just throwing them away, you know, you can, you can, and even like furniture and things that you're offloading, find a, a group to be able to donate to it. They can take it. That's um, a great way to, you know, cause our stuff's in good shape. It's just either we're tired of it or it's, you know, style maybe is a little bit out of trend. So it's not like they're trash because it's been sitting in vacant houses. So they're still nicely, you know, they're not damaged, but um, think about how you might be able to give back. And I love, I would love to get you connected with Liv Conlin, who is from, um, just because you guys are both, she was a 16 year old that built her business in Scotland in the UK. And um, she's 21 now, um, but built to seven, seven figures there, you know, didn't even finish high school, got her GED. She was bullied a lot, but she's, you know, a beautiful girl. Um, and what she does this time of year is they do, they bring Christmas trees and things to probably about a hundred families in her community and they decorate them and they get them all set up. And so she's, she, I don't know if she's doing that this year. It probably is, but she's, um, I saw write-ups on it. And I just think something like that, where it becomes like a mission. So you, you're going beyond yourself and giving back to your community, um, which I think is so amazing. Yeah. yeah. So um, you just have so many parts. If I could just talk to you for a whole nother hour easily. So we'll have to have you come on. And somebody wrote, I love hearing how God is working in this industry. I'm in Nashville and I'd love to shadow when visiting my in Dallas. Oh, so yeah. it just says, whoever, whoever you are, just says Facebook user. So I, I don't know. I can't see your name, but um, definitely message Nikki and uh, reach out to her when you're in, in Dallas. Cause I'm sure that you just sounds like she's got plenty of projects yeah. <laughs> that you can shadow on. I love Nashville. So the first time I've ever, ever been was for the conference. Yeah. And I brought my mom and she, me and her love Nashville. I was like, we got to come go back there. Yes. That is like the best place. So I'm, I'm ready to go back to Nashville. I, I love Nashville. It's just got a really cool vibe. Like if we ever left here, I told my husband, I go, that would be a place that we would, I would consider moving to. Cause I just love the whole, 
you know, the whole vibe of it. So, all right, well, I'm gonna let you go. I know you've got a lot to do today. So thank you so much for being on. It was such a pleasure. Um, have a Merry Christmas. And hi, sweetie, who's that? This is Lucy. This is my office manager's daughter, Lulu. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so cute. <laughs> she tried to run away, but she she's, she's of course, you know, they got that homeschool thing going on. So for the, for the COVID. So she's, she's coming to work. Yeah, go get you. you know, there's a lot. There's a lot they can learn hands on. Like I homeschooled my kids um, for four, for five years. I have four kids, and so we would do like anything you do. Then can become an exercise. You can weigh things. You can do a little bit of math. You can sort things. But so you can have yeah. So she looks like she's what is she? Would look about five or six. She's five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, good. She gets to see that you know real life experience, and so. But thank you so much. Have a blessed Christmas. You too. We'll have you back on, and um, and I was I'll put some information about about your um your trainings too, because I think people are going to be interested in that. Okay. Okay. All Thanks right. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.